So I just remembered that we're going to be without power on Friday, which is the day I normally record these things. So I guess I have to do this well now. Welcome to November's monthly roundup. So I should probably start by saying, insert comment here about where did the last month go. Um, I guess it wouldn't be me if I didn't complain about the time or the weather. Um, but hello and welcome. Um, this is Board Game Inquisition. I'm Antoinette. And once a month I sit down and I tell you about what's been happening with my board game collection. And I hope that you will also share yours with me too. I love hearing what people are playing, what you're excited about, what you're looking forward to. Because, you know, there's just not enough of that in the board game community as yes, there is. Um, so so yeah, um, this month has been busy and I had planned the next month being even less busy because, you know, Christmas feelings, those kinds of things. But none of that's happening um, and I'm getting caught up in a, a whirlwind of stuff um, and this video, I suppose, will reflect some of that. So I normally break this into three sections. The section the first, where I tell you about the games that arrived. Section the second, where I talk about trades and stuff like that. And section the third, where I talk about things I've been playing. And because it's been a busy month, some of these may in fact overlap. I usually add in a fourth section, which is about, you know, me as a human being, the channel, um, the, you know, random human things. Um, but I've put in all these little points in the video so you can click along to whatever it is you might want to watch and preferably the whole thing. All right, all right, all right. So let's jump right into this um, at the beginning because this is going to be um, fun, I think is the word. So um, those of you who were here last month, knew that I was on a ban of buying board games. And last month I did in fact buy no board games at all. Um, we did have trades and things, so we weren't completely out in the cold. Um, this month, um, okay, I broke it, I'm not gonna lie, but um, I only bought one game and my husband bought one as well, so technically it's two, but I didn't have any say over the second one, but it was a really, really good deal and it's something I'd wanted for a really long time, so I feel zero remorse. Um, it was totally worth it. Um, and I suppose we should start in with this because these are the these are the new games. Um, okay, so the first one, of course, is the one that broke the ban, um, and this is Tang Garden from. See, this is the problem with having planned this. No, well, having lack of planning for this video. Um, I want to. It's it's like. Thunder Griff Games. There we go. I'm not completely a waste of space. Um, and Town Garden is a game about um, building a beautiful garden and then having objects of interest to see in the garden for your characters. Um, it's got some stunning models. Um, it's a beautiful game and it's a very beautiful production, no doubt about it. But already when it was released, um, there were complaints about the game um, and that's to do with its iconography because what you're really doing in this game is yes, partly you are placing a tile every round um, out to build the garden, but you also have characters who want to see particular symbols that are either out on these tiles or out on decorations or out on kind of scen scenic pieces um, out on the board. Um, and they're not easy to tell them apart. And I, <laughs> and it's such a shame. It's like everywhere in the game is this, this beautiful stuff. And every time there was a choice made of whether people should be able to see the symbol and play the game or make it beautiful, they instantly chose make it beautiful, which makes the game, yeah, difficult to play. God forbid you had any kind of, you know, seeing difficulties or things like that. Um, and I think it's such a shame. Now, I still, I still like the game quite a bit. It's very chill and very relaxed. It reminds me of something like Takedo, where you know you're just having a lovely experience. Um, I don't think it's a game you'd want to really play competitively, but um, I'm surprised at myself that not only did I play it at once, I've played it a couple of times. Um, and that's that's a that's a good sign in our in our house. So yeah, I think it's beautiful and I think it's interesting. I think it is flawed. Um, but I didn't pay much money for it, so I kind of don't mind. And I think I'm going to keep it as well. I think it's just one of those that I like to have and pull out once in a while just to have some kind of chill, relaxing time in the garden. Um, so yeah, so that's Town Garden. Um, did any of you back it on Kickstarter? It was a Kickstarter game. I have the, the retail version. And I can't really tell what the difference between the retail version and the Kickstarter one was other than you get some expansions. So I don't know, what, what have you guys thought of it? Have, have you seen pictures of it? Is it something you might like to play based on how it looks? Because I, I think it's one of those games. Definitely draw you in. 
Um, so yeah, so that's Town Garden. I'm finally off my wish list as well. Hurrah! <laughs> my wish list is ever dwindling. Um, and so the second game we bought this month, this is all my husband's doing, so I actually know very little about it, but um, it's it's a wonderful world. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is a card game, um, and I think it just came off Kickstarter, or there's another printing having gone round, so I think that's why we've, we've picked it up while it was available, um, and I still haven't opened it or played with it yet. So that's, you know, next on the agenda whenever we get round <laughs> to the next rule book. Um, isn't that the fun part of buying board games? You get your game, you open it up, you're so excited, and then you're like, oh, I have to read the rule book now. Um, do many of you actually watch videos for your rule book kind of, you know, feed in? Um, so, you know, there's all sorts of people who make rules videos nowadays. Do you find them useful? Um, I find it very difficult to watch somebody else use the game pieces to explain the game to me. Don't know why, I don't know why that's the case. I would much rather sit with my own pieces and the, the rules. Um, but I know lots of people love them and they're, they're I think they're such a great idea. Um, like, yeah, who, who, who better than, you know, to have somebody teach you the game out of the box? Like, you know, the concept is very, very solid. Um, so I'd love to hear if you actually use those. Um, so those are the two new games. Um, I, kept, I kept it trim, I kept it trim. Um, and then I'm going to jump into the review copies. Um, now, this is an interesting lot of games. It's been a very big month for reviews. Um, and it's very exciting. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll jump in first uh, with the first thing that I can remember. And this is Too Many Bones from Chip Theory Games. Um, so Chip Theory Games makes some very expensive and beautifully looking, beautifully looking games. That's not even a word. Yeah, that they're known for their fantastic production values and things like that. And Too Many Bones is their game that's about, uh, it's like a dungeon kind of crawl thing. Um, I still haven't got to play it yet, right? So I'm not being very specific for now, but it is a dungeon game. Um, I have unboxed it so I can tell you kind of what's inside it. And woo wee, God, there's a lot of beautiful things in there. Mostly there are a lot of dice. Unsurprisingly, thank you, you know, <laughs> because the title says so. Um, but also there are um, player mats for your characters where you're basically progressing up like a little talent tree. Like if you played Diablo 2, um, you can go up the little trees and paths and unlock certain things. And I think that looks really fun. Um, it's beautifully put together and I haven't really played a, well, no, that's a lie. Um, I was going to say I haven't played any dungeon games um, in a while, but that's not true and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it and not just because of its fancy components. A lot of people speak very highly of the game. So I would just, you know, I love a bit of a dungeon once in a while. So um, that's really exciting. So there will be a review coming for that eventually. I won't tie myself down to any time frames because I'm going to be busy for a little bit. Um, so that was super exciting. Um, the next game that I have in store is called The Cost and this is from Spielworks. Um, this is a very unusual sounding heavy Euro game. And this is a game about asbestos. So for those of you maybe who don't know, asbestos is kind of a, a caustic thing that, that kills people if you spend a lot of time around it. And for a number of years, people thought it was really, really safe and loads of people were dying and it was outlawed. But apparently it's still in use today in certain places. Um, so this seems to be a game about determining how much asbestos you're willing to, to use or to engage with to kind of get ahead or when will you stop? You know, what is the cost, I guess? Um, I'm just, I'm, this is complete conjecture yet because I said I've just, I've unboxed it but not got any further and it looks like um, a very standard um, Euro game and I'm super excited. <laughs> it's really was awesome, about a real good dry Euro game. Um, so there's that. So that's coming. Um, the next one, and I am going to talk about this one a little bit because I have played, and this is My City from Cosmos Games. Um, so you may have heard of My City. It was a Spiel des Jahres nominee. It comes from Reiner Knizia, um, and it is a game about building your city with little um, polyonimo or those Tetris pieces. And it's also a legacy game. Dun, dun, dun. So this is what makes this so satisfying. Um, so it is a game where you're just, you're given a starter board of like a piece of land and you have to place out your buildings in the Tetris shape to cover up as much as you can or as little of certain things. 
and to build up your city and to earn points. But because it's a legacy game, every time you finish the first game, you open up an envelope and there's a different rule for the next time you play or something else has been changed or added in. Um, and it's so exciting. Um, I haven't been this obsessed with the game in ages. Um, and I think partially this is because the game takes like less than 20 minutes to play, it takes no time to set up and it's very simplistic. I was worried that it would be too basic, that we wouldn't enjoy it. Um, but you know what? It's very interestingly put together in very subtle ways. And I think it's the kind of game that I want to play at Christmas. Because <laughs> I can I can see you just picking this up with a cup of coffee and having a quick little game and, and then coming back later and playing another. And it is quite addictive because you want to know what's going to happen next. It's like, well, what's in the next envelope? What, what other things could happen to our city? Um, I think it is fantastic. It is my number one pick for Christmas. I think if you're not sure what board game to buy somebody for Christmas, this is the one you should be looking at. Um, I'm very, very impressed with it. I can't stop playing it. <laughs> um, there's a part of me already that's planning on getting another copy of the game so that I can just go through all of it again now that I know what I know. Um, and at the end, there is a game board that you can play with like forever and ever afterwards. But um, yeah, it's a blast. I've been playing it at two and I hear it's just as fun with more because you all kind of have your own board and it's simple enough really that anybody I think could play it um, and anybody could enjoy it. So um, yeah, that's my promotional spiel of the day. <laughs> I can't help it, I really liked it. And part of me, my job and me being here is to tell you about stuff I think is amazing. I think my city is really, really, really good. Um, so yeah, that was super exciting. Um, what else is on the inbox? Okay, so Cryptid is here from Osprey Games. Now Cryptid has been out a little while, um, but I've not been able to own it because apparently you need three people to play it. Um, so I got fortunate that I had a visitor in my house at the weekend and I was like, hello, you're going to play Cryptid with us. And he was like, what? So um, Cryptid is a deduction game. Um, so there is a board in front of you um, of different types of terrains and such. And somewhere on there is a, is a hidden Cryptid and each one of the players is given a clue um, as to where it is. Now you don't tell each other this, of course, your own clues, and you have to try and deduce um, where the hidden thing is. And it's, it's so fun um, and also quite difficult, uh, depending, I think, on the group you had. Um, but we had a blast with it, with trying to work out where everything was and, and what. And also it plays really, really quickly as well. So I was able to play a number of games in a hurry, um, which is fantastic. And then after that, um, we were both kind of sad that we just couldn't play it on our own, a two player. You know, I don't like needing other people, seems unnecessary. Um, but it turns out there's in fact a two player variant. Um, I'm not sure I'm a fan of it, but um, what it does is instead of you having just one clue, um, both of you, a two player, have two clues and have to answer kind of questions accordingly about where hidden things are. Um, I found it very hard to keep two clues in my brain at one time. I felt like I needed pen and paper, but it is a nice workaround if you re really wanted to play Cryptid It too. Um, but um, so far so good. I think, it's a, I think it's a fun game and it's very different. Um, no other game feels like that when you sit down to play it. And that's the kind of games I, I want in my collection. I want, I have nothing that does something like this. So Cryptid stands out quite uniquely. Um, and what else came in that pile? Um, so Merv the Silk Road, um, this is the newest release from Off Osprey Games, um, with art by Ian O'Toole, <laughs> whose sister lives in Passage, here where I live apparently. Um, so yeah, so there's a big connection between me and Ian O'Toole. But um, this one I haven't unboxed yet. My overhead stand broke. <laughs> Actually it broke while trying to film Too Many Bones because Too Many Bones is such a big box. It doesn't fit in the collapse, by the way. Um, I couldn't get my rod over the table to fill it, to fit everything on screen. Um, and so I broke it. So I have a new one inbound. So we'll see how that works. Um, so yeah, so I haven't unboxed this yet, but um, it looks beautiful and interesting. I saw a lot of talk about it at Spiel. Um, it looks nice and euro -y and colourful. So I'll report back, well, maybe next month, um, with how that one went down. 
Um, and I also received a copy of The King Is Dead. So this is the second printing of it. It's got a very beautiful cover, very medieval-y looking. And this looks like an area control game on a small map of England with kind of cubes and cards to move things or change things around. Um, I've not played that yet either, but it is beautifully made and lives in a completely unnecessary size box. Like you take off the box lid and there is an insert in it just to hold like a deck of cards. I'm like, this is a terrible waste of paper. I get that the board is big, bigger, but yeah, <laughs> felt like a bit of a waste. So, um, okay, so have I anything else left on that list? I've been trying to like put this together on the fly today because I was not prepared to make this. Um, oh wow, I did, okay, I made it. So that was the review games. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be real busy. Um, so which ones are you looking forward to hearing about the most? Um, have you played any of them? Have you any advice for me, perhaps? Um, I love hearing what other people have to say about games. Um, so yeah, so what have you been acquiring this month? Have you started doing like your Christmas board game shopping yet? Because we're, we're kind of almost there. We're like, well, we're buying this for Christmas, even though it shows up like tomorrow. Um, yeah, so let me know what's, what's, you know what's been getting to your house, if anything at all. Um, and whatnot. Okay, so we'll move on to the second section now, which is trades. So the trade portion this month is going to be a little bit small because basically what's left is stuff that hadn't come through from the math trade last month that just missed the cutoff for this video, well, for the previous video. Um, so I'm going to start with Dice Throne Season 1. Um, I didn't particularly want this game because <laughs> I knew it would be dice rolling. Um, and uh, we don't, yeah, we don't play many kind of Yahtzee style games here um, in our place. But I'm nothing against them, to be very fair. I think if you have fun with them, great, have fun with them. Like, um, so we did, in fact, play Dice Throne. We rolled some dice. Um, I have to say the game is put together very, very well. Um, there's a lot of things about that production from Roxley Games that's very, very impressive. Um, and so basically what the game is, is that you have a character, they have particular abilities, and if you roll those symbols on your dice, you can line them up with those abilities to perform them. And you are dueling against your opponent's character and you want to reduce their life to zero. Um, and so, like... Yeah, it's, it's it's rolling dice and matching the symbols, but it's very nicely put together. I think the rules are um, outstanding. Um, it's got some great timing rules. There was never any question about when I could do something or when I couldn't, um, which was really, really impressive. Someone can put it together so, so well. I think more games need to feel like that when you play them, where there's zero uncertainty about how something should play out. Um, but you know what? We had, I had fun with it the first time we played it. Maybe it's because I won. I don't know. And then the second time, we played it I also won and I was like I don't know if I deserve that victory I just rolled a bunch of dice maybe slightly better than my opponent did um but I can see why these games are fun it just wasn't a, a great fit for us but I kind of knew that before it got here <laughs> um and the second game that arrived is La Granja La Siesta isn't it it's got a full title no no the, the see there is a roll and write version of this apparently and there is the the big game so I, I, I assume the big game is called La Granja um our copy is from Stronghold Games don't know if I was if I, I doubt they actually published it like it was theirs originally. But um, this is a, not quite as a tableau builder, I suppose. I'm putting it in the same bracket as something like Castles of Burgundy, where you're placing things out on the board to trigger things to, like a resource management kind of game. Um, I'm not going to lie, the teach for this went really badly. I just, I couldn't understand why you were doing particular things. Like I knew that that was the rule, that this is what you do, but I just couldn't piece it all together into a whole picture. So that kind of clouded my effort at the game. And I finally kind of got there by like the end of the game. I was kind of seeing it a bit. And then my first thought was, well, why would you play this over Castles of Burgundy? <laughs> It, it has that kind of same feel where you're going through the phase and you're taking thing off one place like basically it's kind of a farm kind of thing where you're trying to get your goods to market and you have pigs that can become more pigs and um, things like there's a there's a lot of bits going on and I couldn't I couldn't fathom it all together and I definitely didn't understand the center board where you would just put a guy for victory points 
I'm just like what? <laughs> um, so yeah, I didn't have a I didn't have a great time with it. Um, I don't think that should take away from the game as a whole because like yeah, I, my my experience of it didn't work out well. That doesn't necessarily make the game bad, but it just for me it falls into the same bracket as. Castles of Burgundy and I think I would rather play that um, but I know there's a lot of love for um, La Granja um, I can see why I think it's quite it's kind of cool the way I really like the board actually your player board's cool because you're tucking thing on one side uh, but you can tuck something the other and then there's spaces up the top so it kind of it fills out um, which is pretty good um, so yeah, so that was La Granja. So I think that's all of my trades. I think trading's got a little bit quiet now coming up to Christmas. You'd think it'd be the other way around. Um, but sure, we'll wait and see. I'm sure there'll be an influx of some more trades at a later date. Um, but yeah, so yeah, let me know. Do you trade? I, I ask it every month, do you trade? I feel like I'm the only one out there trading. I'm trying to encourage more people to trade games so there will be more people to trade games with. It's a good system, it's a good system. Okay, so finally we'll flip on to games I've been playing. Um, and there are a lot of those, so I'm gonna have to like pin this down to like a smaller selection of games I've been playing. So in the spirit of the previous monthly roundup video where I talked about new games I'd gotten but I haven't played yet, I feel like I should tell you about them now that I've played them. Right? That like that makes sense. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start with that. Um so the first game I want to talk about is Space Corp. Um, yes, it has a number after it. I'm not going to remember it right now. <laughs> I hate doing things on the fly. I much prefer having lists and things ready, but um, yes, we're, we're just, we're going au naturel today. Um, so yes, yeah, Space Corp. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's a big space game. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm really good at this reviewer reviewing thing. No, so um, Space Corp is a game about exploring out into space. And how it works is that you're basically building up resources and things um, to be able to launch your rockets further into space, to set up a base to be able to launch yourself even further. Um, and you start out on the first player board um, and you'll start at Earth and you start launching your way along. Um, so there are, you have a handful of cards um, and you can enhance your own actions using these cards um, and whatnot. And that's how you kind of move, you build, that kind of stuff. It's actually pretty um, straightforward. I heard rumors that this game was complicated. It really isn't. It's it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty straightforward what you're doing. Um, what's really cool, however, about this game, and it's why it's got, um, you know, the, the long play time, I think it says four hours on the box, is that, so you'll get to the edge of the first board because you'll have gone as far from Earth as you can. And then the board flips over. And then there's like a new board with goals and things on it that you're trying to do. And you're in the same solar system. It's just now got smaller on the new board and everything around it has got larger. There are new places to explore. Um, I thought that was a really, really cool mechanic. And it definitely gave you the feeling that Yes, when you explore your space, it feels like you've reached everything, when really it's just a drop in the ocean. There's so much more space to get to. And so you, you carry on like this through this space. And then at the end of this, it flips over again, and it's even more further extra, ex abstracted as you're looking down at all the different kind of groups of planets and, and things like that separately, and you're traveling between those. Um, I think it's a, actually a really interesting game. I've come across nothing quite like it. Um, it does take a bit of time to play, but there's something very cool about it as well. You, you can play it in a sense for as long as you want to, because you're able to start, let's say, from that middle board. You don't have to start from Earth, or you could start from the, the final board. So you can shorten the game by playing certain phases of it only. Um, but the fact that you go from the first to the second to the third phase and you carry over some of the stuff you've built up, I think that really adds to the game. It gives you a cool sense of progression and stuff that you might not get if you played them singularly. Um, I do think it's actually a really, really cool game. It's not one I can see myself pulling it very often. Um, so, <laughs> but I can see what it was trying to do. Like I wouldn't object to playing it again. I just don't think it's a great fit for our house, but I do think it's a fine game. Actually, I thought it was really, really good. Um, I, w I was surprised. <laughs> so that was my experience with Space Corp. So if you're interested in spending long hours in space exploring, this is definitely something you might want to look at. It was good stuff. Okay, what was next that we talked about last month that I didn't? Ah, yes. 
So this is Super Dungeon Explorer Forgotten King. Um, it's I can't believe it's not Arcadia Quest. <laughs> so Super Dungeon Explorer is um, a dungeon game, unsurprisingly, with little minis where you know you and your crew. It's kind of cooperative, so you head out together to kill monsters, to get enough stuff to go and kill the boss. So you've heard about this before. Yet again, this is another one I didn't pick. Um, the interesting thing about Super Dungeon Explorer over other similar things is um, the way it does kind of like the hate mechanics. So when you hit another monster, um, you generate hate on you or whatever you want to call it um, so that the monsters are more likely to attack you. But you're able to move it around between your characters as they you know, attack the, the monsters as well. So that you're trying to balance out who's the one most likely to be attacked or not. Um, this is interesting because I didn't think much of this game, but we had a lot of fun playing with it actually. Um, it was kind of a blast. We were running around shooting stuff. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing. Um, what really um, annoyed me is the fact that you play with everything in the box. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much everything in the box. And there are a selection of five characters to play with total. Um, now I just have the, the base game, meaning that at two players, we had to play two characters each. So there was only one character that didn't get played with. All the monsters um, stay the same every time. There's no rotation there. They'll spawn in different parts on the board maybe. But I was just so disappointed that we'd seen everything the minute we played once. Like, I, I was appalled that that was allowed to happen <laughs> in the first place. I was like, why, why, like, why? It's got zero replayability. I can't, I can't imagine a reason I would want to go back and play that again if everything was roughly the same. Um, and that also means you're getting the same items for your characters. Like, I was just, I was a bit blown away that that was actually the case. Like, most games with miniatures or things like that is, they'll have a, a series of monsters and you will play with one or two today and maybe two or more next week um, or whatever but not everything together so I was I was really disappointed in the sense that we actually had a lot of fun playing with it um, I would play with it again but like it needs some variety who, who released the game with no variety I don't know apparently yeah so I see would that annoy you or is this just a me thing would you be disappointed going this is everything we're going to get to play with and I think this is the case just because it is a miniatures dungeon-y game you don't want to have to see the whole dungeon on the first go um yeah so that was my experience with Super Dungeon Explorer I had a lot of fun with it but why would I want to play it again yeah weird um, and then the last game, last game from last month that I did not tell you about was Camel Up. Yay! Um, and you guys had all sorts of great things to tell me about Camel Up. And you know what? You were right. Camel Up is fantastic. Um, now I've only played it at two players, which never, which seemed bad, right? Because generally speaking, no one should play a racing or a betting game um, at two players. But well, that's that's what this is. You race camels around the track. You, you the dice come out randomly out of the pyramid, so you don't know who gets to move when, and you get to bet and hope that you are right and to win and you know what it was fantastic at two players we got really serious about it like we were getting very like well there's only this die left inside and the chances of him moving two instead of three spaces like we were working it out and bet lit up it was fantastic too we had such a good time with it that we played it a few times <laughs> i also think that the the cool thing about camel up is obviously this pyramid and the dice go inside of it and it works like a shaker in a sense and you press the lever and one of the dice will fall out and that will be how far the camel will move and I think that's just such a cool part of it um, like whoever came up with that was super super smart but as a whole I didn't expect it like this as much as I did um, it, it was fantastic stuff um, and that's a keeper definitely and I, I love when a game that shouldn't work at two players works at two players I think that's always a really nice surprise isn't it um, yeah I think it's fantastic so um, that's the games I was 
playing this month, or at least from last month. I've been playing different things this month. Unsurprisingly, I was playing a lot of Tapestry. Um, you may have noticed my review for Tapestry went out. Um, I ended up playing a lot more Tapestry than I had intended. Some games just, you know, need a little more than others, right? So I was like, oh, so many games of Tapestry. It'll be nice to set that aside and play something different um good times so yeah so what have you been playing this month what's been your standout favorite have you had any games surprise you that you were like wow this was so much better than i thought it was going to be or any of course any disappointments because you know we all need to know about that um definitely okay so you've made it this far congratulations this is the end of the board game bit now I'm going to go on to the human bit and i will try and be fast because i'm pretty sure this video is going on for almost forever hey you how are you doing I hope I hope I hope you're good. Um, today I'm filled with much hope, so there should be less doom and gloom than normal here today. Um, I hope so, anyway. Um, that would be pretty <laughs> that'd be pretty great. It's been a really busy week or two. It seems like it's going to get even busier. Um, it's been a long time since I had this many review copies to to work my way through, and I can't help but feel bolstered by that. Um, that, you know, that people want me to make videos about their games. That, you know, that makes me feel good inside. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, because sometimes people tell me nice things about my videos and obviously it's lovely to hear, but the thing, if see from my point of view is that I don't see what you lot see. I'm behind the camera or well in this case in front of it and, and I'm putting all of this stuff together and when you're doing it all by yourself it feels very disconnected from the actual output at the end. So it's really strange to hear people say things about my videos and I'm like oh oh I, I never I never thought that I never saw it that way. Um, and so, yeah, this has been a, a month of bolstering, or at least the last two weeks have, um, which is really, really exciting. Um, and some more exciting stuff, of course, is the, the fact that I am picking up new bits of equipment. So I'm hoping I can make my videos even better, um, specifically those ones, I, the intro videos. I'm trying to find a way to make it a little bit easier on me for future reference, because I anticipate that for the month of December, it's going to be hard to get stuff done. Um, December, November is always really triggering for me. I have all sorts of issues surrounding families, people loving each other, getting together for Christmas. Oh God. Um, it just, you know what I mean? It just, it puts me in a funny place. So my goal for this year, unlike other years, is I'm going to work really hard and hopefully it will keep me busy enough to get all the way through the season. Um, and it's looking like it's working so far. Um, but yeah, some, so I've been saving up for some new equipment. Um, I put a shout out on um, Twitter if anybody was looking for videos made or I could help with the rule book or something like that. Um, and you know what, people were really, really lovely. Um, and I really, really appreciate appreciated that a lot. But at the moment I'm selling off some of my board games to pay for equipment so I can bring you guys better videos. Um, Cause you know, I, I don't make money myself. So I don't want to be asking my husband for every single thing all of the time. So it's really nice to have a little bit of my own. Um, you know, that's <laughs> and I'm very fortunate to have a Patreon um, if any of you want to check it out. That was a strange plug, but my Patreon pays for um, my Adobe software so I can make videos and stuff like that. That stuff's expensive. So I love those people for being so kind as to be able to donate to help everything go together. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of that stuff. But um, no, I'm excited. It's like, it's like I suddenly discovered that this is my hobby. <laughs> Which is a really weird place to go, isn't it? Um, it's just funny because I was joking with my husband. I was like, if money wasn't an object and you could you could get me anything for Christmas, what what would you get me? Um, and he's like, oh, I get you some photography stuff. And I'm like, photography stuff? Why would you get me that? And he's like, well, it's your hobby. <laughs> and I'm like, is it? Is it? And then I sit here surrounded by lights and cameras, and I went. Oh, maybe, maybe it is. And I just, I'd never really noticed before. And part of my brain goes, well, that's okay then to kind of spend money on it if it's your hobby. 
weird isn't it weird so yeah so I'm, I'm saving up for stuff um and it's exciting because it's keeping my brain busy and away from kind of the sadder things but I'm just I'm feeling really invigorated so for once you're getting a monthly roundup where it's not all doom and gloom um I try really hard not to be like that all of the time even though it kind of it is very much who I am but um I do like when something's good I do my best to hang on to it I'm not I'm not trying to drag myself or anybody else down do my best to stay afloat I think is the the better phrase um so yeah so some kind of exciting things coming up soon um there will be a new episode of the tabletop inquisition podcast um which you should be looking forward to I think we're going to talk about Christmas games um so that should be um really exciting and what else so oh yeah the big announcement here of course is the fact that so this is the last monthly roundup of this year Dun, 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 dun. Those of you who've been here for a while will recognize the fact that once a year um, for the December monthly roundup, um, I do the Golden Board Game Awards. Um, myself and my husband do it together. And this is one where we have like different silly categories that we nominate board games in. Um, and we'll tell you which ones are our favorites and which ones won, that kind of stuff. And we always have a bit of a laugh with it um so yeah we've had such great categories on it as the most outstanding gloomhaven in the gloomhaven award <laughs> and hot new designer stefan feld was the winner of that last year so if you've got any questions or categories you think would be great for the the golden board game episode i would really like to hear them i'll even i'll even read them out um in the video so you guys can look forward to that and that means the next monthly roundup won't be till january it's a long way away I'm gonna miss you guys um but yeah it's been fun so um yeah I guess what I'll do now is I will wish you all a happy Christmas I'm around I'm not really going anywhere just this video isn't anywhere um and uh, yeah, I yeah I hope you are all safe and happy um and that everyone's having a good time and if you need something um reach out and say hello why not I'm always here somewhere at the other end of the computer um exactly <laughs> so I'm gonna call it now because this is probably long and uh, thank you for this impromptu monthly roundup I'm sure I've made a bunch of errors um and we will see you again soon so take care everybody bye bye bye